Hello viewers of NTR TV. I am here again, Esther James from NTR TV. As we all know that Turkey for the previous years, it has been a very good relationship. It has established a very good relationship with Africa. And Nigeria has been one of the major, it's a giant of Africa. Today, before then, you know, in, Af in Turkey, in Ankara, we have a lot of embassies, African embassies, and we're privileged and honored to have His Excellency Ambassador Ismail Yusuf Abba to give us an insight from the Embassy of Nigeria. So I thank you so much to have, for having you on our program for today. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. So uh, it, to our knowledge, you came to Turkey like recently, a few months ago? Yes. How I, was your coming, your feeling, coming to the office, being in Turkey? Well, very exciting. I arrived in Turkey on the 29th of um, April 2021. And uh, since then, of course, uh, it has been an exciting um, moment mm. for me. I presented my letters of credence to His Excellency, the President of Turkey, in uh, June. Mm. And of course, that, is official, that was officially the beginning of my activi official activity in, uh, in Turkey. It's been quite exciting so far. Yeah. So has you, I, looking at your profile, you were also an ambassador in China, Nigerian embassy in China and other countries? Are there other few ones before you came? Yes, China? you know, you know, I'm a career diplomat. So I, I wasn't an ambassador in China. I was, okay. yes, I was a minister in China. I was uh, in the embassy of Nigeria in China with concurrent aggregation to um, uh, Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, I was before then I was in Italy. Yes, I've also worked in South America, in Argentina, with concurrent accreditation to Chile, Peru, and Uruguay. I've served in uh, Middle Eastern countries. So it's been uh, three decades of uh, uh, diplomatic career. Mm -hmm. So some of our viewers have the understanding that the embassy is for having getting visa and <coughs> uh, the immigration office. So in your office and position, can you just give us just a brief highlight of some of the major responsibility of your position in the embassy? Well, um, let, me, let me rephrase your question. Probably you want to know the functions of uh, uh, diplomatic missions, essentially. And uh, I will tell you straight away that um, the diplomatic missions are not just for issuing visas. You have uh, various... Uh, levels of responsibilities. You have um, the consular aspect is what you're talking about. The consular aspect, of course, has to do with uh, issuance of visa for people-to-people -people exchanges, for people who wish to visit uh, Nigeria for business, for tourism, and uh, for whatever reason. So you have the consular section that deals with that, processes the application for visas, and then visas are issued. Mm -hmm. And then in th still in the consular section, you have the issues of passports, passports for eligible uh, applicants, Nigerians essentially, whose passports have expired, they need it renewed, whose passports are lost, they need new passports and all that. So that's another level. And then of course you have the next level of uh, consular activity which has to do with the welfare of Nigerians here in uh, Turkey or indeed anywhere we have diplomatic uh, missions. So the totality of the welfare of Nigerians in the country, uh, including, uh, in including also uh, the welfare of even Turkish nationals who want to visit Nigeria. As long as you step your foot into the embassy, of course, we give you uh, consular assistance that you demand for. Mm -hmm. So essentially that is the aspect of consular. Then you have <coughs> the, the proper diplomatic functions. Diplomatic functions, the, the reasons that countries come to uh, establish diplomatic uh, relations is to foster solidarity, foster economic ties, and of course for the overall well-being of their people, for, for, for peace and prosperity of their people. So that level is handled at uh, a more strategic, uh, it's a more strategic fair, sphere that you handle. It has to do with constructive engagements with relevant host government establishments, mm -hmm. uh, be it the Ministry of Economy, 
the Ministry of Health, uh, Ministry of Defense, you know, but the focal institution for this constructive engagement normally is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of, uh, in our case, the Republic of Turkey. Mm -hmm. So essentially that is it. The, the function is to ensure a good relationship between uh, our two countries, uh, to, to promote trade and investment mm -hmm. between our two countries, to promote solidarity between our two countries, mm -hmm. to promote understanding on global issues and the governance system between our two countries and then of course uh, ultimately gears towards uh, promoting the um, general well-being the welfare of the people of Nigeria and the people of Turkey thank you very much sir talking about the um, promotion between the two countries we know that um, Turkey, so far, Turkey has been welcoming a lot of African people. Mm. And in terms of the business opportunities also, I could say that Turkey uh, gives a lot of uh, business uh, support with African countries. As the, uh, Your Excellency, as the ambassador for Nigeria, what can you say in the business aspect of uh, Turkey and Nigeria that connects to our economy? Well, um, I think uh, uh, both countries, Turkey is, uh, is an industri industrial country, has a good industrial base. Nigeria has uh, a developing industrial base, has a huge market. The population of Nigeria as of the last count is uh, a little bit above 200 million. But that is not all. We have the ECOWAS market consisting of all the ECOWAS countries. And if you put that together, you're talking about uh, almost uh, 300, uh, 250, 300 uh, million people. That is a huge market. Then you go to the recent agreement on the African free trade area, you, where you can move uh, goods freely in addition to other in incentives within Africa. You're talking about a market of about 1 billion and 50. That is huge. And that should be a huge attraction for Turkey. Yeah. That presents great opportunities yes. for Turkey. And uh, the African countries, particularly Nigeria, will seek normally to um, leverage on the industrial base that Turkey has mm -hmm. to secure direct foreign investments in, uh, in relevant industries where Turkey has comparative advantage. Mm -hmm. The same way we also expect Turkey to leverage on the uh, industries and the variables in Nigeria where Nigeria has uh, uh, comparative advantage. That way you have a win-win relationship where uh, Nigeria benefits and then of course Turkey benefits based on uh, mutual trust and, uh, and, uh, and uh, mutual trust and, trust and expectation of uh, uh, a mutual outcome. Mm -hmm. So you talk about industry. I know be, being a Nigerian, I know there's a major focus on agriculture. Yes. How do you think Turkey can, fun can be a major function? Since Turkey produce a large number of machineries, in that industry relationship, do you think Turkey and Nigeria will have a very mutual relationship in the in agricultural aspects? Well, a lot is already going on in that regard. And uh, Nigeria is a huge agricultural country with huge uh, ar uh, agricultural potentials. And uh, where there are deficits of um, the equipment for modern farming, uh, Nigerians approach Turkey and then uh, we expect that uh, along down the line, mm -hmm. down the line we expect um, substantive investments from Turkey in areas of agricultural equipment. Substantive investment in, in terms of manufacturing those equipments in Nigeria. Transfer of the technology for manufacturing of the equipments in Nigeria. Essentially, that, that will be a very good uh, uh, way of giving impetus to the relationship between the two countries. That's awesome. So we all know that every uh, country, every embassy has challenges of its citizens. Yes. Yeah. For Nigeria, in as much as we have uh, the positive 
aspect of Nigerians living in diaspora. We also have the ones that do not follow the major guideline. And so it creates some negative images for Nigerians in diaspora. Your Excellency, in your position, what advice can you give to some of our Nigerian youths, probably even Africa at large? You, you, you're very correct. Now, let me tell you, the, the respect you get from your host community as a diaspora depends on how you conduct yourself. If you are general, if you are law abiding, you know, you obey the laws of your host countries, you are not find you are not found wanting, you're going to have a lot of respect and you're not going to be profiled. But where you have um, nas nationals come in and refuse to obey the laws of their host country and they constitute themselves into nuisance, no matter how small they are. It has a repercussion on the larger law-abiding citizens from those countries. So my advice, very simple, obey the laws of your host countries. Just obey the laws of your host countries. Be peaceful. If you have uh, grievances, I'm sure there are laid down procedures for sorting out grievances. In the case of Turkey, I know that there is a National Ombudsman Institute that deals with grievances from all the nationals of Turkey, including uh, diasporans. So people should, uh, everybody should avail himself of this uh, institutional framework for addressing uh, grievances. And if you are out, outside Nigeria as a Nigerian and you have grievances, we have Nigerian embassies all over the place. Part of the functions of the Nigerian embassy is to um, take care of the welfare of Nigerians. And if you have grievances, approach your embassy and lay your grievances. Mm -hmm. You know, a situation where people engage in act of public demonstration, for me personally, I think adds to the reasons why a lot of us do not get respect that we deserve. Because check it. Check the poorest countries in the world and see if there are countries whose nationals go outside to engage in public demonstrations outside the country. I don't think I can recall any significantly. So that, that fad, that, that activity, I think we should begin to rethink it and look for more organized ways of uh, voicing out our grievances without creating inconveniences for our, for our host communities. If we do that, if we obey our laws, the laws of our host countries, which are clearly laid out, we follow institutional frameworks for addressing uh, grievances, and then we work in concert with our embassies outside, then the sky is our limit. And there will be no reason why anybody would disrespect us. But having said that, I want you to know also that Part of my responsibility as ambassador of Nigeria in Turkey is to protect the interests of Nigeria, to protect Nigeria's strategic, vital, uh, strategic national interests, including the welfare of Nigerians. And in that regard, I would, we would ensure that all law-abiding Nigerians have their dues. But we will not hesitate also to expose yeah. those few Nigerians who give Nigerians bad names. And we encourage the Nigerian communities mm -hmm. to do the same. Because it is when you expose the few bad eggs among you that those who are law abiding yes, get protection. Well, if you protect bad eggs, then you are smearing your entire reputation. It is very, very simple to protect the reputation of your country by the way you behave, mm -hmm. because we are all individual building blocks to the whole nation. So it's very important we do that. Thank you very much, yes. sir. Really, really, you, you gave a very deep insight about this. And right now, I feel like just going to the whole Nigeria, as you people should just come home. <laughs> so talking about being in Turkey, I'm, I'm curious, this is totally out of the questions, yes. but I was curious, your first experience coming to Turkey, 
It was, did, were you, have you ever visited Turkey before or when yes. you got an appointment before you came? I've been to Turkey, I, 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 I was in Turkey in 2011 oh, okay. and of course uh, I've uh, transited uh, Istanbul airport a couple of times, oh. yes. So, uh, Your Excellency, what is your, which is your evaluation about Turkey culture and the people? I think the first thing that struck me about the, uh, Tur the Turkish people is the friendliness. Because like I told you earlier at the beginning of the interview, I've visited almost every continent of the world, but this country, the people are unique. You know, as soon as you get into Turkey, you feel at home. Oh. You know, yes, because, uh, and again, it's possible also, uh, probably because of the cultural similarities date, uh, dated back to history and all that. Yes. But uh, you feel at home, they are friendly, and then uh, interaction is very easy and uh, it's easy to engage the nationals and the, the ordinary Turkish person, the Turkish official, yes. always willing to, to explain things so that uh, you have proper perspective on issues. Yes. I think that is a, a great credit to Turkey. Yeah. So have you tried their food? Which one would you say you like so far? Have well, you found I don't any know. particular you know, one? You, you know, <laughs> again, uh, I, 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 that is also very easy because yeah. um, there is a similarity in culture. There is the, the, the pastry. Generally, I, I like the pastry stuffed with meat all the time. And then, of course, the very interesting one is the, the olive uh, leaf that is stock, stuffed with uh, rice and, and meat. You know, we call it ya yabrak or yabrak <laughs> something. So, but that is, that is, I'm not a food person particularly, but uh, I like that pastries and I like the, the very healthy nature of uh, Turkish food. Thank you so not much. too oily and uh, not too um, elaborate. Yes, uh, thank you so much. We are so excited as NTR TV family. And as we have explained, NTR TV is an African television, the only African television actually that broadcasts in Africa. Yeah. In your position, do you think there might be a future relationship in using NTR TV as a platform to promoting Nigeria to other African countries? You know, um, the relationship between Turkey and Africa, yes. from what I have seen so far, uh, from what I have seen uh, so far, uh, is, uh, is very, very excellent. Based on the relationship, is based on mutual trust and respect, is based on uh, history, mm -hmm. right from the Ottoman Empire, is also based on proximity. It's not far to any of the African countries from here, maximum, maximum five hours. Mm -hmm. So it's not far. And then if you have um, uh, proper logistics arrangements, trade, exportation and importation also will not take you uh, more than 10 days mm -hmm. if you have proper log logistics arrangements. So with all these variables in place, the trust, the mutual respect, and understanding, and then the great possibilities in trade and investment, people-to-people -people exchange. I think the opportunities are limitless for, for the media. For the media. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, the media has a responsibility to bring awareness to the enormous opportunities existing between the two continents. Yes, so it's the same with uh, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I took it broadly for you to understand that same way it happens to the African uh, continent mm -hmm. is what happens in the case of Nigeria. And of course, you know Nigeria has a big space there. Yes, sir. So that is it. There is great opportunity. And it's up to you. It's up to your, your media outfit to explore the opportunities. Mm -hmm. well, we tell you the embassy is here at any point in time to guide you, to give you, um, to give you um, greater perspective more than you know on areas of, uh, uh, areas of mutual benefit between your media outfit and media outfits in Nigeria. Yes. And the media in Nigeria is very, very vibrant, very open, vibrant, and then I, I, I can tell you that um, 
There are no inhibitions as long as you operate within the confines of the law. You know, a lot of foreign media operate within the confines of the laws in their countries, but once they get to Nigeria, sometimes they get carried away and they begin to operate outside the confines of the law. If you do that, you get into trouble, really. So study the laws uh, guiding media operations, which are based on global best practice. There's nothing different between media laws in Nigeria and media laws elsewhere. They are all the same, based on global best practice. So the opportunities are there, and it's up to your outfit to exploit. And anything we can do, we'll do. Thank you, Excellency. Yes. Your last words to our viewers, your last words. Well, my last words is, um, is we'll continue to deepen relations between Nigeria and Turkey. And uh, for us, it's, uh, the relationship for us is sentimental. Sentimental in, the term, in, 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 term, in, in, in terms of the fact that uh, we have cultural uh, similarities. We have um, mutual respect for each other. And we, have, we share the same ideals in the global governance system. We, Nigeria and Turkey shares the same view about how the world should be shaped in order to have the much desired peace, security, and prosperity for all mankind. Mm -hmm. So we, we will continue to do our best to deepen relations between Nigeria and Turkey to achieve uh, the larger objectives of, uh, of mutual benefit to both countries and then, of course, uh, contribution to global governance. Thank you so much. Once again, we really appreciate you for giving us the welcoming NTR TV to your office. Thank you. And we really appreciate your contribution in every way possible. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, we hope next time to be here again. We'll be, we'll Hello be to glad to have you. Thank you so much. Hello, viewers. We have come to the end of the interview with His Excellency Ambassador Ismail Yusuf Abba of the Nigerian Embassy. Stay tuned on NTR TV. I am Esther James, and we will bring to you more insights from the embassies and also on the business inside the economic aspects between Turkey and Africa. Stay tuned and see you again next time.